I belong to what I like to call the Walkman generation. I've been told that I look younger than I actually am. So I used to think that was the Discman generation. But recently, I discovered that I'm actually a part of the Walkman generation. And that is why images like this evoke emotions in me. When you see an audio cassette lying right there beside a pencil, for some of us, we, initially, we immediately connect those two things together. For a lot of people listening right now, I'm sure if not for Instagram memes, you probably do not understand what that signifies. But when we were young and we all had you know, um, need for music, we had our Walkman, and we discovered quickly that the battery life drains when you skip forward or backward, you know, rewinding or forwarding the music. And we had to find a creative approach to solving that problem because, I mean, even though batteries were as cheap as two naira or five naira for a pair back then, we still didn't have that much disposable cash to throw around. So we came up, I mean, with a simple solution, put in a pencil and roll it around and you can skip forward or backward. I mean, it takes a while, but it solved the problem. That was creative thinking. I also belong to a generation where we played a lot outdoors. Um, we we exercise our minds, exercise our minds creatively. But any time we had to play indoors, this is what we had. This is a game console, very similar to what um, you now see nowadays: um, the PS One or the PlayStation or the Xbox. This is called a family comp. I don't know if any of you, you know, remember using this. But for us, this opened up a new level of imagination because for the first time, there were images on our screens that were animated. And we could control that animation with a small controller. So it was mind-blowing at that point in time. We had never seen anything like it before. And it got us thinking about possibilities of things that could happen from then on. Around 90, 1996, my father got um, a gift that turned out to be a desktop computer. And before then, my, en my encounter with computers was in the computer room of my secondary school, where we were taught about MS-DOS, or we you know, would find our way in to play Prince of Persia or something like that. But there I had this computer sitting in my house for the first time, and I could go to the study and actually use it even though my siblings, all they wanted to do was play games on it, I found applications like Encarta 95, and more importantly, Microsoft Office 95. Now, I don't know if any of you, again, use those applications, but with PowerPoint 95, I discovered something. You could animate. You could make a word move from one point to the other of the screen. And that got me thinking again. I mean, very similar to the games that we played, you know, the video games. I could create something. So I started playing, out, playing around with PowerPoint, you know, just doing basic animation, trying to mimic what I saw on the game consoles. And that, again, was me using my imagination. I just knew that, okay, fine, now I had something I could use to create, and I tried to create something with it. In 2002, I got into Unilag. Around 2003, I bought my first ever mobile phone. That's it. Very beautiful. It's called the Samsung R220. It was popularly known as Blue Eyes back then. Cost me 18,000. I don't know how I managed to save that money. But then, this phone was a thing of beauty. Apart from the fact that it could connect me instantly with my father, by flashing whenever I wanted money. There was also the fact that it had this simple application called a ringtone composer. I found it very interesting because it gave me the power to create. I mean, you could, if you, if you listen to a hot tune on the radio, 
there was no way you could get the tune on your phone. There was nothing like memory cards or anything like that. So you had to go out of your ways, go back to secondary school, and remember the do, re, mi, fa, so that you learned, and compose the actual tune to that song, and then put it on your phone. Why? Just so you could be cool. When I was young, I remember guests coming to our house and, you know, uncles and aunties, and they would ask, oh, what do you want to be when you grow up? And my, I had a default answer. I want to be a businessman. And they would look at me and say, why? Because that was strange. But I remember when I was much younger, I was watching a movie with my dad once, and I saw this man, well-dressed, clean-cut suit, holding a suitcase, and he looked rich, obviously rich. And I asked my dad, what does that guy do? And he said, he's a businessman. So that stuck. And I said, okay, I want to be a businessman when I grow up. So when I was about getting into Unilag, of course, on the Jam brochure, you don't have any course that says, oh, you study this, you become a businessman, right? So I had to settle. What did I settle for? Engineering, systems engineering. Why? Because I knew engineering equals oil, oil equals oil money. Oil money was greater than bank money, was greater than law money, was greater than accounting money. And I wanted to be rich. So I chose systems engineering. But what this, when I got into Unilag, the first thing I noticed was I met with the internet. Now, in systems engineering back then, it was not compulsory. They wouldn't tell you that you needed to have a desktop computer. But God help you if you don't have one. So I had a desktop computer, but I had no internet. In all of engineering to arts, there were only two cyber cafes back then in school. But I became an addict. It cost about 200 naira to browse for an hour, and I spent all my money browsing. Why? Because, again, I encountered a source of information that could help me create. So I would go to the cafes and browse tutorials and whatnot, but there was no way I could act on them immediately. So I would go with a pen and a paper. I couldn't save on a flash. There was no PDFs, nothing. So I would copy down all the tutorials, go back to my room, practice, come back again. Imagine how tedious that was. But I found a way around it, and I created. Now, when I was told to give this talk, and, and I saw the, the subject of the, the topic breaking out of the box, I thought back to all these things and how we had broke, tried to break out of the box from way back as 95. And I thought to myself, okay, if we've been breaking out of the box from way back then, what is different now? Now, I'll run through some numbers for us. Now, these are numbers available to all of us. On the internet currently, you find out that 2.5 billion people worldwide have smartphones. Remember my Samsung R220. A smartphone will not just connect you to the rest of the world. You have access to internet. You, don't non, you no longer need to compose music. You can download it right onto your phone. If Facebook was a country, it would be the third largest. I mean, if, if, your, if your smartphone will not connect you enough to people, I mean, you can get right there on Facebook, talk to someone in China, talk to someone in the US. You do not need to travel around to get to connect to people. 24 hours of video material is uploaded to YouTube every minute. Every minute. That is tutorials. You have all kinds of how-tos. You have um, recipes. Um, you have people cooking. Whatever information, imagine that. And finally, 3 billion queries on Facebook every day, three billion. Let those numbers sink in. If people were not finding answers to their questions, they won't be searching. It means there are actually answers out there. And if all of this doesn't do it for you because it's all high level intellectual, let me give you a simple fact. One in six, one in six of people married in the last few years will tell you they met their partners online. That ties it in for me, meaning you can meet someone from China, from the US, where, wherever, 
online. That is access. And what all of this tells me is what we know as the box or what we were thought was the box no longer exists. When you think about it, the box that we're asked to break out of or break through was physical barriers. In the case of you know, me browsing in the cyber cafe and going back to my, I didn't have a flash disk. I didn't have a flash drive. In the case of um, Windows 95 animating or whatever, I didn't have tutorials to guide me or anything. Those were physical barriers. And we found creative ways to break through them. But more than ever now, those barriers are no longer there based on the numbers that I just showed you. Now, I'm going to do a quick exercise. By show of hands, how many people recognize who that is? Raise your hands. OK. Now, keep your hands up if you recognize who that is. One person. I'm going to tell you who that is. Her name is Zoe Sug. She's a fashion vlogger. Vlogger with a V. What she does, she takes gives tips, records them, and she puts it on her YouTube channel. Not long ago, she made the news because she bought a house for 1.5 million pounds. She has 7 million people subscribed to her YouTube channel. She is 24 years old. And just to bring it home further, we all know who that is. Hate her or love her, Linda Ikeji is the biggest blogger from Nigeria, West Africa, and possibly Africa. And we all know what she does in terms of what she has acquired and all of that. I chose these two examples because when people talk about breaking out of the box, a lot of examples they give are very techie kind of people, Mark Zuckerberg and the likes. So a lot of people restrict themselves and they say, oh, I don't know how to program or whatnot. But I want to use the examples here. A vlogger that takes YouTube, a medium that is available to all of us right now. I mean, you can create a YouTube channel in two minutes. You can create a Blogspot blog in less than two minutes. That tells me that the physical barriers from the box no longer exist. I pulled up this list of a few jobs that did not exist 10 years ago. There was nothing like a vlogger or a blogger or a digital marketer, but now you can employ people in those fields. And all these things, you don't even have to go to school to learn. You can learn online. I'd like to end with this quote. Logic will take you from A to B. Imagination will take you everywhere. Thank you.